Hi all, hope you all are doing good. My name is Saurabh Dhani and in this video we'll talk about workflows. One of the most talked feature in Business Central and Dynamics Nav. This is the first video in this series. There will be multiple videos that I'll be posting going forward about workflows. In the first video we'll talk about a quick introduction about workflows what are workflow categories what are workflow templates and how you can create a new workflow from the template and as we go forward in other videos we'll talk about what options you have what configuration changes you can do in the workflows that are created from template what are different permutations and combinations for approval type or approval limit in workflows so for this uh, demo I'll be using Business Central 16 it's also called as Dynamics 365 2020 Release Wave 1 but you can follow these steps in Dynamics Nav if I'm not wrong 2016 and higher also so let's open our client and once your client is loaded let's quickly have a look on what are workflow categories so search for workflow categories and you will see that there are some predefined categories in the demo database that comes with the product these categories are used to group similar type of templates that Microsoft have created and don't worry that if you create a new database for a new implementation you will always get workflow categories and workflow templates because those are part of the company initialization process so as soon as you create a new company in the database all these by default uh, will get loaded which is workflow categories and workflow templates so categories are used to club the workflow templates and as you can see uh, following categories will be available on every new company as soon as you initialize it which are administration finance integration purchase and payable purchase documents sales and marketing and sales document so let's see what what templates are inside these categories so for that let's look for workflow templates and if you remember these are the categories that we saw in the last page of categories and inside these categories there will be one or more workflow templates so like under purchase document you will see a blanket purchase order approval workflow a credit memo one for purchase invoice approval order approval workflow purchase quote approval workflow and return order so just for this demo I'll be using the sales document and I'll be setting up the sales order approval workflow if you need to set up any other either on sales or purchase or on that falls on a different category feel free to choose that all these templates are more or less in the similar fashion if they fall in the same uh, type of documents so like sales order approval workflow will have a similar template like a purchase order uh, approval workflow so when you click on it you'll see that there is a predefined template and we'll talk about it so to create a workflow from the template you'll go and you'll open the page workflows workflow. once you do that and if you click on new you'll see there are two options one is to create a new from the beginning and this is what 
we are not covering in this video but we are covering how you create a new workflow from the template so let's click on that and then you will see that the workflow template page will get pop up and then you need to choose the one that you want so I'd like to do the sales order approval workflow so let's click on that and once you select that the template will get copied into your new workflow that you wanted to create so let's understand the content of this particular workflow page for the sales order approval workflow so the first part of the page contain detail about your workflow which is the code which is a unique code for this workflow a description which talks about what workflow it is if you want to change it you can and then the category is by default by default comes from the categories which are defined and under which this template was placed if you want to create a new category and change it that's okay that's not a problem and then the last field on the first tab is the enabled and if you see currently the workflow is disabled and the reason being that anytime you want to do any changes on the workflow you need to make sure that you need to disable it first otherwise you'll get error messages while trying to modify the workflow so coming to the second part of the page which is workflow steps and this is where your uh, logic how workflow will execute is defined so workflow steps are actually a combination of when and then which means when a event will occur either a user driven event or a particular data change and if meets if that even meets certain conditions then what type of response you want to be executed so let's go through it what does that mean so the first when even that we see in the workflow step is a approval of a sales document is requested which means if a user opens a sales order a sales document and click on the button send approval request so until unless somebody clicks on that button this workflow will not get uh, you know invoked so when somebody does that then system checks that are these condition are being met which is is the sales document that is open and uh, the approval request for approval is clicked is that of type of order and the status of that document is open or not so if a user clicks on a button of send approval request on a sales document and if it is a sales order and the status is open then this response will get executed so if you see it's not one there are multiple as you can see this plus sign but you can see all these responses here so let's see what happens when somebody requests for an approval the system adds a record restriction which means that it will block any changes uh, the posting of that document it will restrict that particular record from posting then it sets the document status to pending approval because it was open once the approval is requested the document status need to be changed to pending approval which is the status field on your sales order then it creates an approval request for the record using approval type salesperson purchaser and approval limit approval chain and we'll talk about these two factors in uh, future videos in detail and then the last response that it execute is it shows a message to the requester that your 
approval request has been submitted and it also creates a notification for the approver that he or she knows that there is a document pending for him or her to approve okay so workflow has been activated document status have been changed to pending approval and approver have received the request to approve so now three things can happen one the approver approves the document second approver rejects the document and the third is the person who requested for approval cancels the approval request so let's see where they are so if you see then there are other events and there are two events for an approval request is approved but if you see there are two different condition on each, each of these lines so let's understand what that means a approval request is approved that means approver approved the request and if pending approval is equal to zero that means there are no more pending approvals for this document then system removes the record restriction which he which system put on the step one and also releases the document which means change the status to released but if you have a multi uh, multi layer approval setup then there can be a situation where approver approves it but there are more approvers that yet need it to approve in that case this event will get fired which is a approval request is approved and pending approvals are more than zero what happens then it sends the approval request for the record to the second level of approval and creates a notification for that person that I have approved it now it's your turn to approve it and if there are more approvals it will keep doing that until unless the pending approvals are zero that's the first scenario where approver approves it now what if a, one of the approver in the chain decided to reject it so if a approver rejects the approval request then it rejects the approval request of the record and creates a notification that this approval request has been rejected and it also changes the document status to open so that user can do the changes that was uh, requested by the approver before he approves it so he need to be uh, the document should be in the status open so that automatically happens when somebody rejects an approval request but then the third scenario that we talked about is let's say I submitted it for approval but after submitting 10 minutes after that I thought oh I had a mistake on my document and I want to correct it before I submit it to approval so then the case this case or this event get fired that if a approval request for the sales document is cancelled if I as a submitter or a requester for the approval decide to cancel it in that case system have a condition to check which is is it of document type order because we our workflow is defined for sales order approval workflow and is the status of that document at that time is pending approval because if it's already released which is if it is already approved and released then it's done if somebody want to make change he'll have to do the changes and resubmit it but if it is pending approval then these actions or these responses get executed which is cancel the approval request so all the approval requests which are created are removed and a notification is sent that that request has been cancelled it removes the rem record restriction which was set at the step one it reopens the document which means change the status of document to open and at the end it shows a message to the requester that you have cancelled the request approval request 
the last scenario or the last event that is available here is in the case if the approver is not available he's on holidays or PTOs and he is not available in the office to approve your document then as a requester I can delegate that and if the delegation delegated user has been set up then this action will fire based on my user action as a requester to delegate this approval request and in that case system execute this response which is it sends an approval request to the delegated user and also creates a notification for him or her to know that he have an approval pending that he or she need to approve so with combination of all these events and responses your document flow is already defined you, you if you are planning to create it by yourself and don't want to use template there are certain other things that you need to notice one of them being indentation the first one is set as indentation 0 and then all these events are the kind of child of this so until unless this get triggered no other event will even if it is fired will not be called so that's one thing and second thing is you can also add your new responses if you want in the evil in uh, in the existing one or you can remove one that you don't want and we'll talk about it as we go forward so there are more flexibilities with workflows than if you would have used uh, the document approval in previous versions of dynamic snap and it's more flexible so the whole idea of today's video was that if you plan if you are planning to customize workflow in some way first understand the power of the workflow and what are the possibility to customize it as a setup rather than customizing it in the code so I hope you find the first video useful please do share your views and suggestions as comment to this video if you think that this will help uh, someone else in the community please do share this video and if you haven't please do subscribe to this channel have a great day and see you next time